Today I want to look at a concept called the chemical mole. It's the chemical mole that allows the chemist to move from the realm of the subatomic and the atomic to the macroscopic or the big picture. I want to start off with some terms that you're somewhat familiar with. For instance, when you hear the term a pair, two comes to mind. A dozen, the number 12 comes to mind. Here are a few lesser known ones. A gross represents 144, a gross of pencils. And a ream, when you buy a stack of papers, you typically buy a ream of paper, or 500. So words can be associated with numbers, and the chemists use the word mole. A mole is associated with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. That number is called Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and it's available in your IB data booklet under your constants chapter. Now, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Particles could take on a variety of meanings. For instance, if I talk of one mole of copper, that would mean I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. That's because copper being an element, the particle that makes up an element, is an atom. If I want one mole of water, water is a molecule. So I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Now, if I wanted to take that further and consider how many atoms would that be? Well, each molecule of water consists of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So I would have one mole of oxygen atoms and two moles of hydrogen atoms. If I want to consider one mole of table salt, NaCl, sodium chloride isn't a molecule, but an ionic substance. And ionic substances are made of things called formula units. So don't confuse a formula unit with a molecule. So if I had one mole of table salt, I would have one mole of sodium chloride formula units. They themselves would be made up of one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. In my last example, one mole of iron 3 sulfate, that also is an ionic material. So I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of iron sulfate. Now if I wanted to break that down further, it would consist of two moles of iron ions, which I obtained from the subscript of two, and it would have three moles of sulfate ions. Now I could take those sulfate ions and break them down further into atoms, but I'm going to stop at this point. I want to also introduce a concept called the molar mass, which is what is the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So let's consider some of the substances I've mentioned earlier. If I was to have one mole of copper, how much would that weigh? To do that, I consult the periodic table and the relative atomic mass that lies beneath copper. If I convert that into grams, that gives me the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper, 63.55 grams. What about one mole of water molecules? What would its mass be? Well, it's made of hydrogen and oxygen, but I require two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. So I add those together, coming up with 18.02 grams. So if I was to possess 18.02 grams of water, that would be the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. What about table salt? One mole of table salt. So again, I consult the periodic table, finding both sodium and chlorine, being that I have one of each present, I add those together and I would need 58.44 grams of table salt to have one mole of NaCl formula units. And likewise with my iron sulfate. Again, I'll locate iron, sulfur, and oxygen and determine the number of atoms that I have of each. So from the subscript 2, 2 times the iron, the 3 is distributed both amongst the sulfur and the oxygen, hence 3 sulfurs and 12 oxygens. I total up that mass, so 1 mole of iron 3 sulfate would have a mass of 399.91 grams. Now I'm going to put the ideas together by looking at an analogy. Consider you have some quarters, and you're asking yourself how many dollars of quarters are present. You could obtain it two ways. One way would be by counting, another by weighing. So, 
I count out the quarters. There's 97 of them. I know that there are four quarters present in every dollar. So I simply perform the following math, 97 divided by four, and I get $24.25. Now, by weighing, I could weigh all the quarters. They weigh 550 grams. I could also find out what the mass of one dollar is by weighing four of the quarters, 22.68 grams. 550 divided by 22.68, and I arrive at the same answer, as well I should because I have the same amount of quarters. So I can determine how many dollars by counting and by weighing. I can do the same thing with moles. I want to determine how many moles there are of water present. One method would be to count. So I count the number of water molecules I have present. I know how many water molecules are present in one mole, Avogadro's number, so I simply divide them, and I arrive at 2.22 moles. Just a note here about significant digits. Both of these numbers have three significant digits, so my answer has three. I could also obtain it by weighing. I determine the mass of water, 40 grams, and the mass of one mole of water is 18.02 grams. Remember, that's the molar mass, the mass of one mole. I can then take the 40 and divide it by the molar mass, 18.02, and I arrive at the same answer, 2.22 moles. So I was able to obtain the number of moles, both through the number of particles and the mass. I'm going to summarize that in this little diagram. So if one has moles and number of particles, one can convert back and forth between the two through the use of this relationship, where capital N stands for the number of particles, N subscript A is Avogadro's number, and N the number of moles. If I have the mass, I need knowledge of the molar mass, the mass of one mole, capital N. And I can also obtain the number of moles, small case n, by dividing the mass by the molar mass. Let's put this to work in an example. A pain reliever has stamped on its side that one tablet contains 325 milligrams of ASA, acetyl salicylic acid. It's a molecule that has this shape, and its formula is also listed below. First of all, I want to determine the moles of ASA. That will require knowledge of its molar mass. So I quickly count up the number of carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens present, consulting the periodic table, and add together their masses. So I have two bits of information at this point. I have the mass of ASA, 325, times 10 to the minus 3 because it's milligrams, and I have the molar mass, 180.17 grams per mole. The relationship I need takes the mass and divides it by the molar mass. So 325 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by my 180, the grams will cancel out, leaving me with moles. And my final answer should have three significant digits because the 325 has three. So 1.80 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now, how many molecules would you have of ASA? Well, I can take the number of moles, which I've just determined in part A, and Avogadro's number, and I can use the second relationship that allows me to go from moles to number of particles. There's the relationship, and now I re want to rearrange it to get capital N, the number of particles, all by itself. So if I multiply the number of moles times Avogadro's number, I'll arrive at the number of molecules. 1.09 times 10 to the 21 molecules. Now I want to go one step further with this problem, how many oxygen atoms would be present in this sample? Well, if I consult the molecule, I can see that there are four oxygens present in each molecule. Hence, if I know the number of molecules, I multiply that answer by four to arrive at the number of oxygen atoms. So this program has served as an introduction to the mole. We'll look at some other calculations with it in subsequent programs. Any questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.